thank you so much, uh, respected chairpersons, for the kind introduction. And uh, thank you, Dr. Bansi sir and the organizers of DIACON for inviting me here. And uh, today I'm going to discuss one of the which modern sulfonylurea and metformin fixed dose combination we should choose. So these are the disclosures, this is a sponsored topic, but the main disclosure is I like the molecule glyclazide and I exclusively like glyclazide. That is one of the reasons why I am given this topic. So starting with the topic, uh, the current place of sulfonylurea in all the international guidelines. So we have seen last couple of years the guidelines have changed and recommended the individualization of treatments. So, and they recommend the molecule based on the you know, risk factor or the current characteristic. And sulfonylurea they have reserved lastly just for the cost purpose. Where cost is an issue, you can use sulfonylurea or pyoglitazone. This is the main area where they recommend. But Indian realities they come different. And that's why we have our own guidelines and recommendation. Why? Because if you see the real world data, the, the major CVOT trials which changed these guidelines, okay, they included the high risk patients and the actual population, study population didn't uh, no, uh, correlate with the actual study pop or actual real world data. If you see 64 to 95 percent of the patients seen in clinical practice, they do not have a proper or established cardiovascular uh, disease and they do not represent the proper CVOT population. And this means there is a uncertainty that the CVOT trials results benefit the applicable to patients seen in real world scenarios or not. So this is a question every time. So that's why Indian guidelines are different and you must be sh uh, sure about the RSSDI wheel also where treatment decision is based on multiple factors, not just the established cardiovascular disease or the ADA guidelines. It depends on the glycemic efficacy. This is the first word they have used, route of administration, safety profile, minimum hypoglycemia, patient's preference also, comorbidity is also, and very important in India is the cost of treatment. So this is why Indian guidelines are different. And the Indian scenario is very, very different and we all know in our OPD. We have a huge population of type 2 diabetes patients in India. And very important thing, we are seeing a patient at younger age also. And we can see the average a one said diagnosis is around 9. So this is very high. And 70% of them are still uncontrolled in, in actual practice also. So they need to spend out of their pocket also. This uh, cost is also again a very important issue. And this younger and newly diagnosed, I am sure in your OPD also you are seeing the tremendous increase in the young type 2 diabetes in post-COVID era. Very important thing is they are going to spend a lot and lot of decades of their life with type 2 diabetes. And this is very important. The importance of initial tight glycemic control comes. And if you delay intensive treatment by one year in conjugation with poor glycemic control significantly leads to increased risk of MI, heart failure, stroke, and even any cardiovascular event. So we have seen data from UKPDS also. I'm sure uh, some of you might be present what Dr. G. Vijay Kumar sir has already told. The early intensive treatment leads to a very wonderful legacy effects. And that is what we want to give our all type 2 diabetes and younger and newly diagnosed patient. And if you see uh, the data, even the trial has ended in 1997, you can see 12% reduction in any diabetes related endpoints, 25% reduction in the microvascular disease and 16% reduction in the myocardial infarction. The very important legacy what we want to see is the 10 years post trial also, where there was no intervention. Still, the well controlled group in the initial days continued to enjoy the benefit of event free survival. So this is again very important thing. So this is a legacy effect where we want our patient to have this initial. So this is a kind of similar patient, young, uh, office work, male, type 2 diabetes, recently diagnosed, hypertensive also, BMI of around 26, family history of diabetes and coronary artery disease, no other risk factor, okay? And he is following his diet and exercise on metformin and still his FBG is 176, PPG 196 and A1C is 8.2. So kind of patients we frequently encounter in OPD, and I'm sure post-COVID we are seeing numerous cases of like this. So which agent we should choose? So can sulfonylurea? 
improve the glycemic control and help better outcome? Yes. So that is why we are going to discuss this molecule. The first and foremost thing is we want to give our patient an efficacious molecule. So two important molecules you can see with the highest A1C reduction. So I would say non-injectable and oral therapy wise, you can see sulfonylurea and pioglitazone, they are one of the you know, highest efficacious A1C reduction capacity. And unfortunately, in all the conferences, these two are neglected. And we are all discussing the newer CVT trials only. So very important thing is the efficacy. We want to give our patient a highly efficacious agent and where sulfonylurea scores the most out of all OHAs. And also, if you see the uh, recommendation from uh, the group headed by Dr. Sanjay Kalra, this was published in Indian Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism, for a sulfonylurea treatment and sulfonylurea combination in management of type 2 diabetes. This was an international task force, and it clearly su suggested that we can use model sulfonylurea. That means glyclazide and glimipiride, and they are effective also, they are safe also as initial therapy also, and if used in combination with lifestyle and metformin. Very important thing, the Indian, say, Indian recommendation says, we can use fixed dose combinations also, containing sulfonylurea, that definitely will help us reduce the cost of treatment, it will offer convenience to our patient, and ultimately, our patient adherence and compliance will be improved that we want in our patients. Also, sulfonylurea may be considered for use in combination with all other oral drugs, uh, except glenides, and this can be used in all comorbidity patients. So this is, again, very important thing. So coming to the, again, Indian data. So coming to the glyclazide and metformin combination data. So this was a, a Indian data published more than around eight, uh, 700 patients where you no know, sur epidemiological surveillance was done for you know, scored breakable tablet of fixed dose combination of glyclazide, extended release, and metformin in patients with type 2 diabetes. And clearly, you can see the data. It showed rapid fasting blood sugar correction. So fixed dose combination, where 60 milligram uh, glyclazide extended release and metformin 500 milligram they were given, and the dose was either one milligram in the uh, one tablet in the morning, one and a half tablet, or two tablets in the morning they were given, and the primary data collected was uh, for the uh, 15, 30, and 60 days for FPG and control data they were major. So eight out of 10 person got rapid reduction in FPG, just less than two months. This is again very important thing. And the fasting sh plasma sugar level were also reduced by 49 milligram per deciliter. Coming to the real da world data also, we have United Kingdom clinical practice research data link data. Uh, this is again very important thing where you know, numerous cases were compared uh, for cetagliptin and metro, uh, DPV-4 treatment and a sulfonide treatment, they were compared. So this uh, UK CPRD study, two years back, they were suggested that we can use glyclazide 60 milligram and metformin combination. In compared to CETA and metformin, we can get a rapid clearance or rapid no, uh, correction of the hyperlysemia is less than three months. And you can see the separation starts very early, even before three months also, we get the better result as compared to cetagliptin. Again, interesting data you can see from here is the durability part, where everywhere, sulfonylureas are blamed for beta cell exhaustion. But in this slide also, you can see data up to three, uh, three years, the continuity or the durability of data were, of the durability of glycemic control represents. So again, these are the real world data with glyclazine. Also, all, what we are all worried and taught about is the hypoglycemia risk. Yes, risk is always there when we are using sulfonylurea, but when we use modern sulfonylurea, it is very less. And even with the new guide study, you can see the comparison. 70% less risk of hypoglycemia versus glimipiride combinations. So this is again a big difference when we use this combination. We will see the mechanism why it is different. Also, CV safety wise. So I'm sure uh, uh, most of you were there where Dr. G. Vijay Kumar uh, sir has mentioned the few of the studies where the actual molecule used for intensive treatment is glyclazide and metformin. Okay, where no newer sulfonylurea, uh, sorry, no other n newer generation treatment were available. And we have this meta-analysis published a uh, couple of years back in the Lancet also, which, which was a wonderful meta-analysis which clearly showed 
that leak glass is CV safe and robust CV safety data you can see from here 17 percent reduction in mace, 19 percent reduction in myocardial infarction, 16 percent reduction in stroke. So we can say though there is no a proper cardiovascular outcome trial for sulfonylurea or glyclazide, but these are the clear cut safety data, CV safety data for glyclazide and as compared to lemipiride where you can see the MACE event were increased, myocardial infarction was also increased by one person and stroke increased by 101 percent. That was compared to glyclazide. But uh, for glimipiride also we have seen the Carolina and Carmelina trial which has found to be safe only uh, where the trial was initially done for agliptin. But still this gives us emphasis that glyclazide has superior CV safety. Coming to the Steno 2 study, Dr. Vijay Kumar has already mentioned a couple of uh, uh, minutes back, so I won't go into details, but sim what I want to convey, the wonderful trial where intensive treatment gave so much benefit to our patient. The you know, weapons used for diabetes control were glyclazide and metformin. So this is you, all you have to mention that it, with these two molecules, you can, give you, you can give your patient this benefit of uh, wonderful legacy effect. And what did this study show with the glyclazide and metformin combination? 7.8 years of intensive treatment. And you can see robust reduction in the macro and microvascular complications. So these benefits you can give to your patient at the end of 7.8 years also. Even the legacy continues here. Not only in Eukopedias, Steno2 also shows the good legacy effect and patient lived 8.1 years of free of cardiovascular event in this study and 7.9 years of increased lifespan also in this study. Also, there was 70% reduction in the risk of heart failure. So this is the occurrence of heart failure. So we have data now with glyclazide also that it protects from hospitalization for heart failure. And these are the real world, you know, well-conducted long-term studies. So why are these differences there? Is there any dif uh, difference in mechanism of action? So these are all sulfonylurea. But the difference comes is the receptor binding. So what is important is the glyclazide has, you no. Know, when we talk about the SUR1 receptor, you can see these are SUR1 receptor and glyclazide binds here rapidly but reversibility, okay? So very, this is very important thing. And that's why there is minimal risk of hypoglycemia. And if you compare glimiparide, which is one of the longest half-life, uh, I would not say compare with glimiparide, but for modern sulfonylurea, it has the longest half-life of around 24 hours because it binds prolonged to the SUR1 receptor and it is irreversible binding to the beta cell receptor. So there is increased risk of hypoglycemia and this especially increased when patient has CKD. Another difference, why this difference in the cardiovascular safety data? So another probable mechanism is the no relation with the cardiac sulfonylurea receptor. So we all know cardiac myocytes, they have SUR2A receptors. So these are cardiac sulfonylurea receptors where glyclazide has no effect on this cardiac sulfonylurea receptors. But for glimiparide, it works here. So it can be a reason uh, for or prob a reason for other older sulfonylurea also for their cardiovascular effects. So coming to our patient, we have added the fixed dose combination of glyclazide 60 milligram and metformin 500 milligram with breakfast. Rest other recommendation were advised for also followed for lifestyle modification. At one month visit, his fasting came 135, PP came 150, and again the patient was advised uh, instead of one, he was taken one and a half tablets in the breakfast only, very convenient dosing, and rest other recommendation were also advised to follow. And three months, his FPG came 150 and PPG came 130. So the clearly uh, the improvement were there and he continued all the recommendations. To summarize, the glycemic control remains important in diabetes management. And early initiation of intestine treatment, we have seen the benefit of positive legacy effect. And glyclazide extended release and metformin combination offers a rapid and powerful glycemic control with minimal risk of hypoglycemia and best in class CV safety. So, we can use this combination in newly diagnosed also for rapid and powerful glycemic control. And for patient who has uncontrolled metformin, we can uptight to them also, and we can give them life free of complications. So I thank you everyone uh, for listening to me. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to help.
nice points in favor of organoclazide, but uh, you showed this about the glimiparide. Uh, so far, uh, still, uh, do you think that it is cardiac uh, not safe? No, sir. Uh, I don't think at all. It mm -hmm. is safe only. Mm -hmm. And we have seen the from the Carmelina and Carolina trial this about the CV safety trial. This was just the comparison from that meta-analysis, that um, Lancet meta-analysis, that it was comparison uh, of both these two molecules. So as compared to glyclazide, glimipride group has a little bit more events. But it, it never said that glimipride increases the risk of stroke or MI or this thing. Or in CKD cases, do, what will be your choice, glyclazide or glipizide? Oh, Depending upon the patient, sir. If patients, uh, glyclazide is the major of use in CKD, but sometimes patient, glyclazide has a little bit longer half-life as compared to glipizide. So sometimes the nocturnal doses, we cannot give glyclazide. And, and especially elderly also I have found glipizide works best for short duration of time and uh, no, when patient is not affording for glenides. So this is where the glyclazide, sorry, glipizide is still used more frequently. Thank you very much Thank you. for nice.